And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you have all been waiting for. It is my greatest pleasure to introduce to you His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. <laughs> Young human brothers, sisters, is it your uh, life? Uh, not like me. I'm quite old. <laughs> now nearly 80 years old. So my life more or less now completed. So you, just the beginning of your life. So it is entirely up to you whether uh, lead happy life or miserable life is depend on yourself. So be think more seriously. Here, bright brain and warm hearted. These two things combined, then you will be happier person, happier family, and through that way you can make significant positive contribution for well-being of humanity. Thank you. Before we begin our dialogue, Your Holiness, hmm? we have a gift for you. If no. you notice, all of us... What gift? <laughs> a very special gift, Your Holiness. <laughs> so when I heard gift, I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> If you like, notice, all of like us... Like a young person. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. All of us, including everybody in the audience, has this wristband. Everybody raise your hands and show His Holiness. Oh. <laughs> I say, I say, I say, oh. On this wristband, it says, Be the Village. This reminds us each and every day to be compassionate and kind towards each other, the environment, and ourselves. Wow. It would be an absolute honor if you also wore a wristband today. This is our gift for you. <laughs> Did it yeah. Other way. Yeah. This way. <laughs> 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 Thank you. We have one for you too, Jimpa, and we we understand that you have two teenage daughters. We would like to offer them oh, two wristbands as well. <laughs> and perhaps one for his wife. <laughs> I'll, I'll share mine. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> One for your wife. <laughs> yeah. And now for our dialogue. These students have thought about all the work that you have done. They have read some of the pieces that you have written and have come to appreciate how you believe that through education, peacefulness, thoughtfulness, and compassion can be instilled within the minds and hearts of everyone. Each person has come up with a question they would like to ask you in hopes that you share your wisdom with all of us today. I would like to start the dialogue with my question to you, Your Holiness. Mm -hmm. In school, we learn about math, science, English, and much more. Our minds are educated in so many different subjects. My question to you, Your Holiness, is why do you think that it is the responsibility of schools to also educate the hearts of students? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, uh, a person now nearly 80 years old and also life, not easy way, a lot of difficulties. Uh, then also opportunity meeting with a variety of people. Some IT leaders, uh, some beggars. Through that way, I develop. And also, I think 
the meeting with a respected, quite well-known scientist and also some spiritual practitioner. Eventually, say, uh, I, I, I fully sort of convinced uh, real happy life not depend on just external means, wealth, uh, even good family, not necessarily being, bring real happy life. Then of course power, sometimes money and power may bring more anxiety, more worry, more fear. So then, and also you see, look, world. I always listen, BBC, radio, radio BBC broadcast. Oh. And of course, newspaper. Uh, so a lot of problems in our world. Suppose this 21st century, because of 20th century's sort of experiences, so many violence, so many war, so many killing. Over 200 million killed through violence. So still, on this, not in the first century, still, a lot of problems, a lot of violence. Oh. So, so therefore, so therefore, the many of these problems, man-made problems, uh, many of them, I think, educated people. More smart brain. <laughs> so this shows existing education failed to bring inner peace, to bring moral principle. So then, if you ask government to bring moral principle, difficult. Even United Nations, difficult. By force, impossible. So only through education, or if we rely on religious sermon, faith, very good, wonderful, it cannot cover seven billion human beings. Out of seven billion, over one billion non-believer. So, then, the only alternative is through education, through awareness. Everybody wants a happy life. Uh, the ultimate source of happiness, happy life, is within ourselves. Moral, moral principle is actually those physical action, mental action, verbal action brings some sort of happiness to other. That's moral. So we are social animals. Think more. Well-being of other. That brings inner strength. That reduces fear. Distrust. Through that way, we can build real happy uh, as a human society as a social animal. So that's through education, not through preaching, not through law. So education about heart and education brain that already exists since the the present sort of education system. Uh, it's very much oriented about material value. Not much sort of, uh, not much talk about our inner value. Like that. Thank you, Your Holiness. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
The students who you see here today have asked themselves this question. How has my heart been educated in school? We will be sharing a few of these stories with you today. The first story is by Hannah Bryant. It is a story about the importance of culture and language. Hannah's will be told through a story, so please, if you take a look at the screen again, Your Holiness, this is Hannah's story. Growing up, I lived in a very culturally rich environment. Um, I grew up on Haida Gwaii, um, so culture was a very central aspect of the community, and it was implemented not only within the community, but in the school system. Um, I spent my elementary school years in Haida Gwaii learning the Haida language and the Haida culture, as well as the traditional, um, the traditional curriculum. And so I got to learn about culture, not only in the community, but also within the school. Um, and it impacted my life in a big way. Um, I've always known that the importance of culture and the significance of culture. And so learning, um, about culture and language has always played a large role in my life. When I was 11 years old, we moved from Haida Gwaii to Prince Rupert. So I'm moving from a small, tight-knit community, um, which is very culture, culturally rich, to another small community that isn't as culturally rich and isn't as tight-knit for me. Um, so, as an 11-year-old girl, moving away from everything that I've ever known um, to a different community um, with different teachers and um, different, just different people, um, it was tough making the adjustment um, from being so immersed in culture to being not and um, find, trying to find a place to fit in again. That was really hard. Things got better once um, I was able to start learning my traditional language of Samaya, which is the language of the Simshian people, formally in the school system. Um, I'd always, I've been learning since I was little. My great-grandfather was very keen on teaching me. And um, so being able to learn it in the school system played a huge part in finding somewhere to, um, finding a place of belonging. Um, I felt like once I was able to learn the language in my school, that um, I was able to connect with more people, with the other students learning, as well as the teachers who were teaching. My relationship with the teachers who taught me Samaya um, was a really good one. They were not only teachers, but they were mentors to me. They really helped me in every aspect of my life. Whereas other teachers teach to um, educate your mind and leave it at that. Well, my um, Samaya teachers went above and beyond and they weren't okay with just educating minds. They really felt they needed to touch hearts of students and that's what they did. Um, they touched my heart and <laughs> in a huge way and they've impacted my life in a huge way and I'm so thankful for that. If the light, some kind of that was so strong that I know, should we see it? Too hot. Turn it. <laughs> so that also act of compassion. <laughs> <laughs> Your Holiness, um, I am First Nations. I am from the Simshian Nation and the village of Lakulamps. My question for you, Your Holiness, is. What is the importance of learning culture and language within the school system in terms of educating our hearts? Now that, I think a difficult question for me, difficult question. The culture, different community, sometimes the culture, the nature of culture itself make differences. To some community, 
some sort of culture. Uh, uh, I mean, because of the, again, you see, due to environment, uh, due to environment, different way of life. Through that way, different culture uh, develop. So, uh, what kind of culture? That also, I think, some uh, some point uh, relevance. Uh, relevance. Uh, relevance. Then language, of course. Uh, here, perhaps I think, because uh, of the, uh, my view, maybe is a little bit sort of because of the. Uh, disagreeable with you, I think. Sometimes I feel on this planet, seven billion human beings, I think so many different language. And firstly, this major language, English, Hindi, Chinese, Japanese, or this, I think too many, too many language, or Spanish, Italian, or, so I think waste of time. <laughs> 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 so, eventually, I always think humanity. Uh, I myself just come here. Mainly, I'm a human being. Meeting with you, human being. We have different culture, different races, different country. But basically, I think oneness of humanity on the level of human being, we are saying. Emphasis, Canadian. Of course, I'm honorary citizen of Canada. <laughs> so a little, little closer. <laughs> so you see the different nation. Uh, So, so therefore, I, and whether we like it or not, future of humanity, we have to think about oneness of entire, entire human being. Then real world peace come. Real happy humanity can, can develop. Too much emphasis, my nation, my religion, my race, is, in a way, the source of division. If I come here, I'm Buddhist. Too much emphasis, I'm Buddhist. Then that automatically distance from you. Barrier. Barrier. Oh, barrier. Then I often is telling people, if I consider I'm His Holiness Dalai Lama. Foolish. <laughs> uh, then I feel I'm something special. I cannot sort of uh, because of because uh, interact easily. No use. Result, I myself create my own prison. <laughs> I'm Dalai Lama uh, on this planet. One Dalai Lama. So I'm just a single person in the prison of Dalai Lama institution. What use? Uh, think more on the fundamental level. I'm a human being. There are no differences, no problem, no barrier. When I meet uh, Westerners, or Northerners, or Southerners, or Asians, no differences. I really, I really feel that's what we really need. Warm heartedness, education about heart, very much related with sense of oneness of humanity. Our compassion, not our family member, not our own uh, community, but entire seven billion human beings. Oh, other people also, you see, feel, feel hot, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I think, I think air condition, I think a little bit sort of cooler, maybe better. That's everybody's interest, not only me. <laughs> Car. Oh. And the salad the Right. Is there heating going on? I mean is there heating? Oh. So so that's my, my view. Hmm. And also, you see, under present circumstances, each community is your own culture. It's really worthwhile to preserve. We also, you see, uh, carrying our effort for preservation of Tibetan culture, Tibetan language. It's helpful uh, in order to develop a city fully, your own community. So we also human beings. We also have the right. So uh, you are feeling, or uh, you are feeling importance of your own language, your own culture. It's really worthwhile. It's good. But long run, uh, I think we really need a sense of oneness of humanity. Like that. So for the time being, I fully committed preservation of Tibetan cu culture or Tibetan language. Eventually, perhaps next century, 22nd century, maybe one language, world language. And then I have no sort of regret. We will join. Forget Tibetan, Tibetan language. OK, no problem. Then also, I think time come. You also, your language, then not much importance. <laughs> yes, next question. Thank you, Your Holiness. Here's a little fan for you, Your Holiness. Oh, I see. OK. Yeah, there. <laughs> the next question comes when, from Jaspreet Singh. When I feel very hot, so I also feel hot now because of that. Because of that. <laughs> yes. Your Holiness, my name is no. Jaspreet. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your Holiness, my name is Jaspreet. As a student of Sikhism, I always try to help others, hmm? other people that are my family, my friends, teachers, students, and all the other people that walk around me all the time, each and every day. In school, I try to be compassionate by joining clubs and make sure that everyone has fun and everyone learns a lot. This is, this is my grade 12 year. This is my last year of high school. Next year, I will go to university. Next year, a new and a bigger world will open to me. My question to you is, how can I be compassionate? What actions and thoughts should I practice so I keep being compassionate even after graduating? Mm -mm. Now, <clears throat> now, when we talk importance of compassion, love, not thinking uh, is something essential of all religions. Uh, love, practice of love, is the best way to serve God or serve Buddha. I'm not thinking that way. Religious belief is individual business. If you use your faith for further strengthening your practice of love, compassion, and that's very good. Sometimes religious faith also is increase uh, too much sort of as the feeling of we and they. Nowadays, in the name of religion, killing mercilessly. So, religion, religious faith must be uh, so the helper to bring inner peace on the basis of compassion, love to others. And love is there 
then forgiveness, tolerance, this come. Uh, so when I talk, you see, the importance of love or affection, compassion, is for individuals well-being, more compassionate mind. Oh, now cool. Very good, very good, very good. I think on behalf of these people, I complain. I complain. <laughs> so, uh, so as a result, over 30 years meeting with scientists, uh, including medical scientists and brain specialists, through their scientific sort of experiment. Now they found more warm heartedness here. Stress reduce. Blood pressure reduce. That automatically bring uh, peace of mind, inner peace. Uh, through that way, now some scientists even say, Constant fear, constant anger, frustration, or agitation, actually eating our immune system. So for our health viewpoint also, you see this inner peace, peace of mind, is very, very important. Then look, family. Then look, uh, different part of the world or community. And then, ultimately, humanity. Too much sort of negative competi competition, harmful, distrust, hatred, anger. Well, these things are ultimate source of violence, ultimate source of suffering. Then also environment issue. I think you. People in Canada, I think not much sort of, because sort of immediately relevant about the environment. <laughs> Cold climate, a lot of sort of forest, I think, okay. <laughs> the southern world, uh, and in, also including India and China, environment issue is so important. So this also, you see sense of, I mean, I mean lack of sense of responsibility, just money, 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 think, your own interest, then maximum exploitation about nature resources, like that. So therefore, judging from various sort of factor, individual, family, community, world, sense of concern of others' well-being, is the key factor. So, you, Sataji, uh, in India, Sikh community, really hardworking. So, you also, I think I'm quite sure, you see, can make some significant contribution wherever you live, wherever you work. Thank you. Your Holiness. Next, I would like to introduce Sage Broomfield. Good morning. Uh, in my school, I've had the opportunity to see the importance of human connection and compassion. Uh, however, it can be difficult to form a genuine connection with people. So my question for you, Your Holiness, is what is the importance of patience and how can one practice patience when making a connection through compassion? Yes, harmony, uh, compassionate family, does not mean uh, all always agree. Right? Uh, so same, same view. It is marvelous human intelligence. Different views, different interests, always there. Disagreement. Ah, disagreement. disagreement always there. So the. 
now here, again, the human sort of the intelligence uh, are very important. Some disagreement, uh, as far as that disagreement is concerned, now you almost you see, want to separate right? or attitude of enemy like that. But then use human intelligence, think wider perspective. Uh, my future depends on that person. Their, their future also some way is related with me. So think mutual benefit. Then, although this disagreement, but okay, this is minor. Wider perspective, we have to live together. So harmony, forgiveness. Truth, correct? So patience, very important. Oh. Patience, not sort of foolish way. That's it, that's it. And so when we speak of patience, the kind of patience we are talking about is not just simply putting up because you have no choice, but a patience that is grounded in some deeper understanding of the situation and the mutual interest. That's my view. And in the meantime, you see, patience or, or forgiveness does not mean um, patience and forgiveness does not imply that you give up your own needs and interest. So forgiveness, uh, actually, uh, and patience, I think, actually, uh, best way to protect your own interest. Some negative things created by someone that usually we call enemy. Uh, then as far as their action is concerned, uh, and sometimes it is very necessary to take counter kasoda, countermeasure. But countermeasure can take with sense of concern of their well-being. Uh, so that's compassion. Out of compassion, sense of concern of their well-being for long run, and take countermeasure to stop their wrongdoing. Not by anger, not by hatred, but out of sense of concern of their well-being. So out of compassion, same sort of countermeasure, one by uh, anger, hatred. That's very bad. That, I think, destroy the possibility of reconciliation. And also immediately destroy your peace of mind. Sense of concern, sense of compassion. Say, take same countermeasure. Firstly, protect your peace of mind. Secondly, Always open a possibility of reconciliation. So we have this human intelligence. Human intelligence is very wonderful. We must utilize human intelligence fully. We should not act like animal. Animal, some sort of, because of the disagreement, some sort of uh, threat come immediately today because of that. Uh, fight, anger. We have this intelligence. We also have the, because of our intelligence, we also have the, some uh, sort of different way to destroy other. Smile, praising, and try to seek the opportunity, then hit back. <laughs> That's also, I think, a human way. <laughs> Right? Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. The final question today comes from Maddie Morin. Maddie graduated from this school, John Oliver Secondary, from a program called Take a Hike. Maddie will tell us about how some of his teachers has changed his life and educated his heart. We would like for you to take a look at the screen again, Your Holiness, and see Maddie's story. When I was really young, uh, I dealt with a very chaotic home life. And um, I would come to school with no lunch to eat. Um, I wouldn't be shown how to take care of myself, so I'd have dirty clothes on. Um, I'd have greasy hair and yellow teeth. And honestly, I didn't really know how to communicate with people. So um, with that, I, I didn't really feel comfortable um, connecting in the social place that is school, right? Here's the bottom line. When I went to Kingsford Smith in grade seven, um, I graduated out of the school thinking, okay, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna succeed in life. I'm gonna graduate. I'm gonna be one of the only people in my family to graduate. I'm gonna make my mom proud. I'm gonna help out my family and that's my goal, right? And then uh, grade eight came around and I hung out with the wrong people and I kind of forgot about that. I forgot about that dream and my passion and my inner flame and what I'm good for, what my resources are. and. Um, I uh, ended up in alternative school. In that school, we went for runs and jogged five kilometers every second day. And um, <clears throat> that really taught me how to be strong mentally and um, how to uh, push through my uh, suffering and discipline myself. They, um, they really challenged us to, um, to reach higher levels in our, in our personalities and to actually dig deep and um, to uh, do things to the full capabilities that we, we can because they believed that we were capable of doing the best that we could and if we didn't, then um, that's a shame on us. But they really motivated us to uh, run marathons to actually go through with the full 42 kilometers, to actually um, go through with running a 10 kilometer run after finishing a marathon. Like the day after, no rest, just kinda. They would prove to us that we're capable of more than we're, we believe that, we're capable of more than we believe so, you know? Like, no matter what we go through, we can uh, achieve whatever we want. And that's, that really touched my heart. And uh, that's really what the teachers were really trying to teach us, is that we're stronger than we believe we are. So all my life, I've had a very strong connection with my mother. Mother? Yeah, my mom. And I'm, my question to you is a good relationship with your mother necessary to the education of your heart? Oh yes, no question. Uh, I always are telling people, uh, my own case, uh, what, what, what is your, your father? What was your father like? Uh, my father, he, uh... he, he, my father, he passed away. I, I didn't get to meet him. Yeah. My, my mom has pictures and I just got pictures and he looks just like me. And he'd be proud, he'd be proud if he was here. Looks, you lose your noise, I mean, nose, same. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly really? the same, yeah. <laughs> yes, I think one uh, I, th I think most important uh, for compassionate mind is our mother's affection. We uh, born from our mother. Uh, 
and next, I think at least three, four years, the mother's affection with mother's milk. Uh, so important for our survival uh, and for our sort of proper development, uh, not only physical, but also emotionally. Uh, biologically, we are compassionate mammal because we are social animal, because we were born, because we we grown up, at least uh, early period because of the few few years. So obviously, I think among your friend, I think you will know those. Uh, boys and girls who received maximum affection from their mother, I think in deep insight, much more calm. Ka, secure. And those uh, son, kasada, kasada, uh, uh, people, young people, or even to the people now, uh, at the young age, lack of sufficient mother's affection, mother's affection, or sometimes unwanted child, or mother abandoned. abandoned. No matter, superficially very successful, but as a human being, deep insight, difficult. So you are very fortunate. In my own case also is my mother, uneducated, farmer, illiteracy, illiterate. illiterate, very, very kind mother. So quite, I, mean, I always say 100%, the basis of my compassionate mind come from my mother. So you are, in spite of some difficulties, as a love, affection, which you received from your mother, I think really precious, really precious. Uh, and then also, you see, the difficult life, sometimes, you say, helpful to gain some sort of inner strength. Life, easy life, right? But sometimes, you see, when such person, when come across some difficulties, then completely sort of demoralize. Person, even nation, nationwide, you see, those nations who are passing through difficult, the nation's sort of inner strength, much stronger. I think European continent, for example, the generation who faced Second World War and immediately after Second World War, I think these, that generation really very, very tough. The younger generation, you see, who never sort of experienced that, sometimes easily complain, a lot of complain. <laughs> So I think Canada as well as America, I think both, you see, your own country, you see, no foreign sort of uh, invasion of these destructions. So maybe, I don't know. But you know better, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your Holiness, you may have noticed one person sitting here with us that is not a student. I would love to introduce Dr. Kim Schonert Reichel. She is a researcher, researcher, professor from the University of British Columbia, and a world expert on social and emotional learning. She has been helping all of us understand the scientific explanations on why each one of our stories had such a powerful impact in our lives. 
I now invite Dr. Kim to share her thoughts and reflections on what she has heard here today. So it's such a pleasure to be with here, here with you, Your Holiness, and to share with you some of the scientific evidence about these stories you've heard. You know, what we know now from science is that when you educate the heart, students don't only learn to be kind and compassionate, it also include, increases their school achievement. They get better grades, they do better in school. And what you've heard today is these stories about adolescents. And I want to just give you a little bit about teenagers. It's a very stressful time period. There's a lot of changes that occur. There's a stress pileup in terms of changes in school, the community, peer groups, and even changes in the brain that can affect them. And it's also a time of malleability of the brain. The brain is plastic, you know, and so you're able to learn a lot. So, Although adolescence is a time of increased vulnerability and problems to occur, it also is a time of a window of opportunity in which we can really create programs for adolescents. And what you heard today are different stories of what these adolescents learned. And rarely do adolescents actually learn the science. The teenagers don't learn the science behind what they do. But here they are, actually, in British Columbia, we're making an effort to help the students learn the science. So I'm going to talk about three different things. First, I'm going to talk about relationships. And what we know from science is that supportive relationships play such a critical role in buffering stress. That when... And how... Right, and, I, and there's a, a um, quote I'd like to use by John Bowlby, who studied early attachment theories, who said, human beings are happiest and able to deploy their talents to best ability when they experience trusted others is standing behind them. And the notion that adolescents can not just turn to their families, but to teachers. And what we now know from the research, and in fact, a recent study we did here right in Vancouver of about 3,000 young people, is that the most important relationship for them in predicting their optimism, their well-being, their self-concept, was not just relationships at home or in the community, it was supportive relationships with teachers that played such a critical role. And I think you heard today from the stories of those roles of teachers that played. We also know from science, and you already said this, I'm going to say it again, is that when you help others, when you are kind, it increases your happiness. You become happier yourself. And actually, what we know now from science is that when you're happier, when you have more positive mood, you actually learn more. You do better in school. You're open. You're more creative as well. So kindness is something that we could promote in schools and students learning about the science of kindness. And the last piece I want to mention is about volunteering. A lot of schools have opportunities for students to volunteer. And we did one research study here in Vancouver looking at students who were 15 years of age. And we wanted to know if those students who volunteered and worked with younger children, if it would actually improve their health. So we looked at things like cholesterol and something called IL-6, which is how you process your immune uh, functioning, as well as body mass in, in index. And we found that those students, this was through a randomized scientific study, half of the students volunteered once a week for 10 weeks, an hour and a half a day, just for once a week, for 10 weeks, and we found that those students who volunteered, it increased their, it reduced their cardiovascular risk. They Result. actually... So they improve their health, which brings educating the heart to a whole new description, basically. So, and we found that those students, by doing that, working just once a week for an hour and a half, that they actually, um, those who developed the most in empathy, had the best effects on their heart health. So these are some, some things that we're doing here in BC, and bringing in the science to actually be able to change the minds of maybe some school officials and other people about the importance of this. But I also want to have you look at all these young people now here, and these young people on the panel, and all of those out there, is that we have tremendous potential here. And it's really up to the adults to help unlock that by providing the experiences and opportunities for these young people. Often adolescents are 
are sort of portrayed as being egocentric and selfish and problems. But I think what you see here is that we have such an opportunity that we could change that framing of students to be ones who could be kind and compassionate and caring. Wonderful. Very wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Kim, ah. for your insight into our mm. stories and for helping us understand the science of educating the heart. Your Holiness, do you have any final words that you would like to say? Mm. So, <clears throat> as I briefly already mentioned, world facing uh, some kind of moral crisis. that not basic human nature is something negative. No. Aggressiveness, also part of human nature, because of this intelligence, uh, although desire or attachment, animal, we human being, same, but because of this intelligence, you say our desire, sometimes you see, increasing, and use our intelligence, so different method. So that is the aggressiveness. Uh, however, as you mentioned, uh, also you see uh, some sort of scientist, as I mentioned briefly, uh, you see they, through their scientific way of experiment or research, basic human nature is more compassionate. It's a date, uh, uh, Richard Kasajo. Richard Davidson. One time, you see, he showed some sort of picture. Uh, you see, that the cartoon sort of tissue. Um, he showed uh, video images of oh. uh, a cartoon. Oh. You see, the uh, two young sort of person, children. Uh, children. One picture shows helping. Affectionate. One uh, little sort of create obstacle to other. Hindering. Hindering. So, so then show very young I mean, children, age four, five, very young. Six months old. Oh, six months old. So the reaction, such young, very, very young sort of child. When they face, when they see helping, more compassion, they feel happy. Uh, hindrance, uh, dislike. dislike. So uh, we can con conclude basic human nature is more compassionate. Then obviously, as I mentioned earlier, constantly anger, very bad for our health. Compassionate mind, very good for our health. So that, uh, Good, good, good health. So, because I think the way we born that way, so biologically, we are more compassion. It goes very well with our body. Fear, anger, these are so same because because Although they part belong to the same part of human nature. Oh. Mata, mata. Emotion, current, the same, the same family of the emotions. Oh. Anger, fear, distrust, hatred, irritation, all these is the same. And also is it extreme self-centered attitude and short-sightedness. It's the same sort of group, same family. So this uh, very harmful. So now, in, in school, you see, we teach as a hygiene of physical. So now, why not? Hygiene of emotion, hygiene of mind must include. Then that also. Now here, I, I want to, to share. Uh, in India, thousand years, the secular, concept of secular, 
according to Indian understanding about secular means respect all religions, including non-believer. That is something very unique and something very relevant to today's world. In the West, some of my friends say they have the view secular is a little bit distance or disrespect religion. Negative ah. Negative towards religion. Negative. And sometimes you see they mixed atheism and secularism. It's totally not. Atheism, something like anti God. Secularism, respect all religion. No differences about different philosophy. But all religions, theistic religion, non theistic religion, according to uh, the secular, respect all. So, India, as a living example, so all world major rich traditions live together. Uh, and also, as I mentioned earlier, respect non believer. So, the, also the, the necessity, necessary, uh, this, this kind of education uh, to entire humanity. So, the way to educate this also must be universally acceptable. If based on religion, then there's limitation. So, the secular way is, I think, best way. Secular way to educate uh, Asoda, our compassion. So I briefly you mentioned that day because of our meeting with boy, yeah, boys and girls, oh, elder one. Mm. So we need, uh, like you see, uh, for physical hygiene, education for hygiene, physical because of the because of education of hygiene of emotion. We need the because of the kind of map of emotion as a part of academic subject. Then, according individual student, or boys and girls, of course, when they meet, like, like you, like, like you, you see the mother uh, gives sort of maximum affection. The child, you see, get maximum happiness. My two parents, my mother, always see, give me affection. So I much appreciate my mother. My father, short temper. <laughs> so sometimes a few occasions like that. <laughs> so at a very young age, uh, my heart much closer to my mother, not father. <laughs> So, so the, 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 the children, the, you see, immediately, you see, shows the kasota, uh, appreciation of the positive emotion. So then, uh, explain this, as, as, I, as I mentioned, you see, groups of the conservative. From the family of emotions. Oh, anger. Usually, you see, uh, give other people a little unhappiness. And the person himself or herself also is dis much disturbed in their mind when anger develops. So, you see, that anger, fear, distrust, these somehow interrelated. So, then opposition, uh, awareness, long term because of the awareness, understanding about long term interest, and then self confidence, uh, calm mind, compassion, affection, same group. I think, I think, I think you also as I mentioned the student received daily from teacher affection. Then their mind then fully open. Uh, and more desire 
mixed with love to teacher, respect. So the lesson come from teacher go very deeply in my mind. If student come to this class with the feeling, oh, awful, entire <laughs> class doors, awful, slow, in the in the If the students turn up in the classroom with a sense of reluctance and unwillingness, oh. it's very difficult to absorb the lesson. Oh. The teacher may be very, very educated, great professor, but less showing smile, less showing sort of affection. And then student, oh, now again, now Monday, I have to go <laughs> to receive, you see, some special kind of blessing from that awful teacher. <laughs> so I think all level, uh, I think just, you see, after birth, from that, from, uh, from that way, uh, from that time till death, affection is the main factor give person so inner peace or happiness. So, uh, so firstly, I think, they, and, and then again, I think the uh, Oh, once you see, get the sort of awareness about the map of emotion. That provides them clear picture, the value or harmfulness about these different emotions. Then also, you see, the relevant other emotions. Uh, so in order to prevent anger, you must prevent irritation like that. Uh, in order to develop compassion, equality, entire human being, want happiness, do not want suffering. And the social animal, my future depends on them. Uh, so, you see then, those with awareness, uh, the sangbul or the jigzi and joy with it. So their own kind of internal uh, relationships, you know, you have to become aware of them. Like hygiene or physical, you see, you need a lot of explanation. Similarly, the hygiene of emotion, also you see, we need a lot of explanation. Now here, I think ancient Indian psychology, really very, very helpful, really helpful. A lot of explanation about psychology. So including Buddhist psychology lot of explanation. So these are very, very useful. And also take as an academic subject uh, and very much related with moral education, education of heart. So that also is, it can be because of the academic subject. So that can be treated as an academic subject, yeah. So, I think uh, uh, ancient Indian psychology is very rich. So I think from kindergarten, because we can asota, care, care down. We can expand it and elaborate on uh, that. Yeah. I think we can, also, we can teach, we can carry education about heart from kindergarten up to university level. More detailed explanation, more detailed, wider asota, explanation like that. So here you already implement these things. So I wonderful. I really feel grateful. Thank you. My <laughs> my job is just blah 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 blah. <laughs> you see, you implement. So wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We have come to the end of our dialogue, Your Holiness. Thank you for being here and for sharing your mind and heart so fully.